Okay. So this uh, question of uh, depression, victim, uh, self-pity, and I think uh, Hawkins' work is really good on the different levels of consciousness. But one of the things with depression, I think which is a really interesting one to have if you feel depressed, one of the core ideas in depression is that I've projected that the source of happiness is outside and that when that source, like let's say, okay, let's say that uh, I come from a food disorder background. Is that a good example? Let me show make a silly example. Okay, so I come from a food disorder, so it's like, uh, let's say, and I'm going to make up something which is totally ridiculous because it can't be true, but one of the things was in the food disorder is like, you can only ever be happy if you're thin. Yeah. But for uh, an alcoholic, it could be, you can only ever be happy if you've got a constant supply of alcohol. Uh, for a donut addict, if you're just addicted to donuts, it would be like, I'm always going to be okay if there's a, a constant supply of donut, donuts, mm -hmm. you know, because then, because the, the source of happiness is projected onto something outside. So either like, if I can become thin one day, then the, at least there's hope in life. Or if, as long as there's going to be donuts around, then you know their life is good. Or even something like uh, that's a good bit grim, isn't it? A death sentence or something, the cancer. Mm -hmm. But it's like when you project something, you know, for someone who takes their appearance from their looks, you know, if only I can be pretty or handsome, then I'll be okay. And then something happens, or it seems like what's been projected out onto the ego seems no longer available. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, suddenly they say donuts are banned in the, globally. Donuts are banned. And you've projected this thing like happiness in this. It can also be with a relationship. When you have a special relationship and say suddenly they get run over or they leave with somebody else, they suddenly you can become depressed. Why? And you don't know why you're depressed. You know? Uh, or you're not sure why you're depressed. You know? So, so what will come if you pray for a miracle of the Holy Spirit to show, to reveal what's the, what are the underpinnings of the depression? Depression is like you've lost hope. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like uh, okay, uh, someone says I've got a metabolic disorder. You're always going to be fat. That's it. You've got to live with it. You're going to be fat. Well, it means I can never be thin, and for me, being fat means you're going to be ugly forever. Well, I'm depressed. I might as well die. You know, I might as well commit suicide or Let's say I'm in a relationship and I've got this wonderful person. I think this is the only person in the world that is right for me. I'm so happy, so, so happy and they get one of the very bus. <laughs> Something, I find that funny anyway. <laughs> Probably not that funny. But anyway, they get one of the very bus. I thought I've met the love of my life. You run over the bus, so you get the, get the phone call. And uh, then I'm suddenly depressed. I don't know why I'm feeling. Why am I depressed? You know, it's like. Well, the ego has projected that the source of happiness was residing only in this person. So, so there's a level of depression that comes in and a level of hopelessness, a level of, you know, I can't really make them. I might, you know, if I'm an addict, I might try and see if there's a way of doing, reading Frankenstein and pulling them from the death or we might get, might, might get a thing or whatever it is. So it's like... You become, <laughs> then you realise you're not able to do it, you see, and then the depression comes. So usually an addict will try and try some methods before they lose, but then the depression sets in. So that's one of the belief systems to, to see. And you've got to realise that the source of life, you've got to cancel that thing. I cancel my belief that this special person is the thing that is, um, is my source, or God did not create this person as my source. Uh, or I pray for a miracle and shift in my perception around the meaning of this event, that this person has died, or that the doctor has said you're going to be fat forever, or donuts are banned in the UK, whatever it is. Pray for a miracle and shift in perception, or God did not create it. And you start to dissolve that, and the, the, the light will come in. The light will start to come in and start to feel it, a hope. And that hope is because the light actually is from within, is dissolving the, the separated... Uh, the, the feeling of uh, a feeling of an ego in separation projecting that the source is outside. As you dissolve 
that dualistic idea. Also, if you're suffering from illnesses, you know, and, and, and a doctor, I always, when I go to doctors, I'm cancelling all the time because they give you statistics left, right and centre. They say, mm. oh, you know, this drug will do this to you and also your, you, these are the statistics, the negative statistics for you. You just can't cancel all of that, you know. Or if they say, we're going to give you steroids and you're going to get fat. You know, you want to cancel that because oh, you're going to get depressed. You know, I have to take steroids for the rest of my life or I'm going to be fat. You know, what's the point of living? So, or if someone is um, diagnosed with something and you feel sorry and you can't you feel powerless over it, you, you get depressed. You know, if someone's given a life sentence, you get depressed because they were the person you were living for. So you have to cancel that and then the, the light comes in. So, whatever, so there can be a, a thing of like if you're depressed and you don't know why. I'm just depressed. I have no idea why I'm depressed. I feel hopeless. There's no point to life. I don't really want to live. You know, there's no point in living. Uh, so, so the pro, you know, there can can be several several belief systems going on which you can surrender, but also know that the source is within. The source is within. If you're depressed, you're angry, you're sad. If there's been a projection from the ego, uh, probably a recognition of powerlessness, that the ego can't get what it wants. So that's uh, that's an opportunity. Now, one of the things is depression is also a very, it's a low energy state of sort of depression, hopelessness. You could, one of the things is I teach feel the feelings or it's Hawkins letting go process. Just forget the story, you know, like forget the story that Diana has been run over by a bus. Just let that story go and just allow yourself to experience depression. But depression is a label. Even to say the word depression gives form to the energy even to go into the story and make a picture of Diana uh, is also to make, is also to, is a resistance to just experiencing out the energy of what is here. You don't have to make a story, you don't have to go into a thought about it. You don't even have, even the, even the label depression is putting form onto just the energetic vibration that is just here now. So just let go of the story, let go of the pictures, let go of the thoughts, let go of the labeling. Just feel that energy, it's not even depression, it's a vibration. Be with it, be with it, it will start to dissolve and you'll go up the levels, your perception around what it was will start to dissolve. Also you'll start, you'll get it, as you go up, you know, it's like the Holy Spirit gives you a different perception. It's okay, you know. It'll give you, a, you know, they're actually having a good time, you're going to have a good time, everything's going to be fine. Then you start to stop tracking it. You're now the infinite now. Nothing is wrong now. It's just everything has dissolved and there's just pure love and pure presence and pure oneness. So as you go up these levels, you're dissolving away this negative feeling and the projections that stem out of the level of the negativity and the, and the thoughts or the projections that are coming out of that energy field are being dissolved and you're going up to the next energy field. And then you're dissolving it away into the infinite. You know, nothing happened. Because nothing happened, nothing, you know, you could say, uh, uh, 90 say nothing happens. You have to track something. You have to, like, pick up something. You have to identify with the body to experience the body. You have to identify with the story to identify with the story of your personal ego. You have to also identify from a level of separation that there is another person in separation. So you're not experiencing those infinite realms where your perception totally shifts from what this world is and what you are and what they really are, even if they are still trapped in, this, in the dualistic separated illusion. Of course, we call it the illusion of separation. So they might still be in that, but you don't have to be filtering things. Like when I met my teacher, because he was in that infinite realm, I had it like a, he jumped me up. Mm -hmm. he, didn't see, he didn't say, oh, poor you, kidney failure, that's pretty grim. I mean, he was making jokes. And that, but he was at that energy of the non-dual, and I started laughing, and I picked up, it's not real, you know. It just, it's just you've identified with your self-story so badly that you're feeling awful. So that starts to, so there's great thing in being in that place when others, you know, and also it liberates everyone around you when you're in the non-dual realm, when you're free of limitations. So self-pity. You know, self-pity, depression, poor me. So that's an energy field, but also you can find out 
ask the Holy Spirit for an impression, what, it, what are the underpinnings of this self-pity? Mm -hmm. I've just been declined, I wanted a job in the stock market, and they've said no, and they said you'll never get a job, you're too dumb to be in the stock market, so you'd just be a bin man or something. So then, okay, so I cancel my belief that happiness comes from ha getting a job one day in the stock market. Actually, actually something I had, you know, I have to get a job in the stock market, otherwise it's pointless. So, uh, let go of that, feel out this, the energy, let go of the underpinnings of what's being projected. You know, I'm self-pity because Dana has been run over by a bus, I'm, I'm in self-pity because there's not enough donuts, you know, I might run out of donuts, there's a donut shortage supply in the UK, or whatever it is, you know, so... Um, or yeah, it can be breakups as well, or people moving to other countries, you know, can be things just to, just to release all of that stuff.